AI robot chat technology has been generating a frenzy set of excitement, accompanied by numerous questionable claims. However, the value of the tools like ChatGPT is not creating presentations out of thin air, but refining your slideshow to make you look better. With the right expectations and targeted prompt writing, you can unlock the true potential of GPT as your robot assistant. Hi, I'm Les from Power Up Training. And while I'm normally making you a better PowerPoint content creator, today I'm going to show you seven practical techniques to harness the power of ChatGPT to create more impactful PowerPoint presentations. So let's power up and elevate your presentations to a new level of effectiveness. Trick number one, make more powerful slide titles with ChatGPT in brainstorming mode. Our goal is to focus on the slide title and generate better alternatives using ChatGPT to dream up new word ideas. Let's switch over to my Chrome web browser where I've already logged in to ChatGPT. It's a simple interface. On the left is my previous search history. Top center is the choice of chat version engines. I'm a paid plus user, so I have the choice of using the older GPT 3.5, which is faster, but sometimes a bit too wordy, or the more advanced version four, which I will use for all of my example in this tutorial but feel free to experiment on your own. Chat GPT is simple. Type in the request, hit the enter key or click the send. Then examine the output results. So on our tip number one, I'm gonna ask GPT to dream up five different titles based on using Chat GPT to create multiple slide titles. And those results, aren't bad, maybe a bit dull, like employing chat GPT to produce an array of slide titles. doesn't quite roll off my tongue, but let's give the AI robot another try. And now ask the robot to make it more exciting. Note that this is a conversational tool. And so I can just make that simple request and GPT knows to work with what was covered in the previous part of the conversations. Oh, this is much better with some action words, but still a bit wordy. Watch this command, make them with fewer words. Now, some of these are starting to be more like clickbait, but the first choice might be a great slide title to introduce a topic. Chat GPT, slide title wizard. So use this trick number one to help jazz up your slide titles or to ignite some new ideas for your own imagination and brainstorm with GPT to make slide titles sizzle. Tip number two is a variation. Instead of coming up with a bunch of new alternatives for a title here, we're gonna work on improving the bullet point as a collection. So let's focus on these five bullet points. I'm going to clear out the previous chat by starting a new session. This is important as we do not want to influence the results. If GPT thinks we're working in relation to the previous chat topic and commands, there may be stylistic choices we asked for earlier, such as make it shorter that we do not want to influence our new conversation. So we're going to start with a new chat GPT for chat session. To save you from watching me muddle through my typing, I'm going to drop in my already composed prompts here. I'm asking GPT to use the copy bullet points from the slide we just saw. And the first attempt, not bad. It did bring consistency of language and bullet construction. The previous slide started some lines with verbs, some with a pronoun and the others all with nouns. GPT however made each item begin with an action verb, 
which is a good technique when presenting. And I did not even request for that stylistic enhancement. GPT can be magically good. Still, it seems a bit dull. So let me ask, add some pizzazz to this. And wait, emojis? That's a little too much. But if I take them out, the words are actually great. In fact, a bit clever, such as kick passive voice to the curb, embrace active voice for crystal clear messaging. That's actually great. Take a look if I grab all of these and drop the GPT version into a PowerPoint slide. This is my original rambling version. And here is the much more engaging version without emojis, but with a snappy bullet point and excellent matching secondary bullets. There's no comparison. GPT did an amazing job of fixing this slide. However, if you find the overall tone a bit over the top, we can adjust that when we go to tip four. But before we learn to shape GPT's response, let's make GPT do some serious analysis work on our slides. Tip three is analyzing and organizing a slide. This is another sloppy set of bullet points that is too wordy and has no consistent verb noun structure. So let's clean it up and add some organizations to it. I'm gonna copy all of the core slide text and now I'm gonna go over to GPT. I'll start a new chat session with the prompt of make a PowerPoint slide based on, and then I'm gonna paste in all of those bullet points for my PowerPoint. And it took my six bullet point ideas and made a matching count of six bullet points with some cleaned up language while dreaming up some supporting sub bullets. <laughs> Look, free ideas. Not bad. As always, ChatGPT does become a bit too chatty with too many words. So I enter the prompt of turn these into more concise bullet points. <laughs> That's better. But the items are still just a disorganized mess like spaghetti thrown on a wall. So let GPT do some analysis with the prompt of organize this into categories. The results are fascinating. GPT is text-based, and so it's a bit hard to see how well this is laid out. So let's go back to PowerPoint slide, where I can then look at our sloppy original slide, and then we'll compare it with the reformatted GPT analysis text. All I did to fix GTP's text indentation was not to make any word changes, but just the delay out on our slide. Otherwise, this slide is all GPT. Look how GPT dreamed up three major themes that I never gave it, and then moved my original items into the proper framework. This gives the illusion of a smart thinking AI robot. I most likely would want to revisit or re-envision the slide, but the concept is a thousand times better than the original slide. And yes, as a subtext message, you need to be critical of any results you get out of GPT or any AI robot. Always check the robot's work. Do not trust the research and sometimes fake facts. But it does drive home the point. I am not advocating turning everything over to GPT, but instead utilizing specific structured requests based on my ideas and the needs as a creator. The second key point is that I'm not advocating the use to, for GPT to do free form research or create presentations on topics that I'm not familiar with. Instead, I am using GPT as a co-pilot to work on my pre-existing presentation. Asking GPT to start from scratch is a recipe for disaster. So at this point, we've seen some interesting transformations of our text, but this next tip is critical to getting it right. Number four, 
setting the tone. GPT can mimic many different emotions or styles or even people. In future tutorials, I'm going to go deeper. But for now, let's sample the possibilities of an example of changing the tone of the speaker. Back to GPT and starting of a new chat in GPT-4, let's do a variation prompt. Instead of typing everything into the prompt, let's set the stage by creating a slide by adding in wait for the text prompt. And now GPT will dutifully wait for us to enter the text to operate on. And it will not impact the results until we're ready to go. It makes it easier for us to see our prompt and then see the results. So it's just a stylistic approach to interacting with GPT. Once again, there'll be future tutorials on creating sophisticated chat prompts. So do subscribe to Power Up Training. Now, I'm gonna drop in the bullet points from our PowerPoint. And as we get the hang of it, we do see a better organized and written response. And as always, it's interesting to ask the follow-up prompt to have the slide analyzed and organized. This is fine. But who was given this presentation? Let's totally change the narrative tone and tell GPT to act like a sixth grader and rewrite the slide. And here we go from bullet points like comfort and scenery to feeling comfy and happy. I'm not sure if a sixth grader would actually be seen given a PowerPoint presentation. But the example illustrates a radical shift in the voice style. And if we want to jump to another stream, how about recreating the same slide as a marketing executive? <laughs> we go from feeling comfy and happy to unparalleled comfort and aesthetics. Both examples are excessive, but it should open your eyes to the capabilities of GPT. Do subscribe for more future examples of setting the tone for your presentation to match you and your audience. Now on to tip number five, grammar editor and stylus. This is for the English as a second language person or just someone a bit self-conscious about their writing skills. GPT can be your one step to improving your presentation. PowerPoint has its own stripped down bullet point styles. So getting grammar and style can be tricky. Let's try with this topsy-turvy slide and it's mixed word choices and orders and even an on again and off again numbering scheme. Once again, with the next prompt skill telling GPT to wait for our bullet points, I then paste in the not so right English. And without any guidance from me, GPT converses into a smoother slide with consistent numbering. However, this is not perfect. GPT again uses a few too many words for a slide presentation, so it could use some work, but it's not embarrassing. And even then, after some rewrites, you would want to get a friend or a coworker to review your updates and give you some advice as a person. AI robots are not the final answer. They're an aid, but it's up to you to do the hard work afterward. I have two more tricks. Number six is about crafting a detail prompt for GPT. The more specific info you provide to GPT, the more pertinent and useful will be the results. Before I submit this one prompt, let's look at some of the key specific instructions I'm giving my AI robot. Here, I state what my role is and who will be my audience so as to set the proper tone. But I don't want to be too technical or use some highfalutin corporate speak. Next, I limit GPT's tendency to create too many slides by setting a page limit, and then provide the specifics of the presentation with the three key reasons listed. Now, let's see how close I get with just this single prompt. I paste all those specifications into a single GPT prompt, hit submit, and it gets very, very close to my intent. My only complaint, and by now you could probably guess what it is, Make it less wordy. Still, 
you should now see the value of creating detailed prompts from the start to create more relevant results. Now on to the last one, number seven, it is to summarize. Outside of PowerPoint, I use GPT to summarize long web articles that are normally too long, didn't read, into a fewer paragraphs where I can read them. But here, I'm gonna take a couple of bullet points and have GPT create a closing summary slide. Let's try it. My prompt is create a summary PowerPoint slide based on the following text prompts. And then I'm gonna drop in two paragraphs and see what we get. And it comes up with four serviceable bullet points from my two paragraphs. It's a bit dull. So I command GPT to make it punchier. <laughs> and I get a fantastic transformation. And of course, I'm gonna turn this into a final slide with all the punchiness I asked for. Supercharged PowerPoint with GPT robots. Achieve crisp and creative wordings with these tools. And you do need to get on board and learn ChatGPT to be better at your job. So embrace AI for PowerPoint. It will only get better and make you look better. Subscribe to Power Up Training for more tips to specific PowerPoint tutorials and to see more of my expanding support of artificial intelligence tools in your daily workday. Until next time, go power up.